As future doctors, writing reports are part of a routine and getting accustomed to this as a medical student can be quite tricky. I'm no expert in writing case reports, but over the years, I've noticed which techniques help me get a line of 8 from a professor who usually gives lines of 7s, and from time to time, I also get this kind of feedback. So here are 5 quick tips on how to improve writing your case reports in med school. But before we get into that, hey it's Janelle, welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this channel, I make videos about med school tips, tricks, and vlogs. And because I've recently graduated from med school, I'll also be incorporating life after med school content and some of my other interests like coffee and tech. So if that sounds interesting to you, do consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell so you won't miss out on any of my uploads. Alright, first tip. Be objective. A lot of times when we conduct a patient interview, we get carried away with what the patient is telling us. And then we end up writing a narrative of what happened. Here's an example of my HPI or history of present illness when I was in third year medical school. Take note, third year na ako nito ah. So, let me read it. History started 10 years prior to consult when patient recalled being hit while lifting a table. The table hit her breast. She noted that she felt a hard mass on the right breast. She underwent ultrasound and mammography, which both revealed benign results. She was advised to monitor the mass, but only submitted to monitoring up to two years. Four years prior to consult, she noticed that the mass increased in size and is now as hard and as big as a marble. She noticed that the skin in her right breast became wrinkly. Eight months prior to consult, she noticed that her nipple on the right breast had inverted and she also experiences non-cyclic breast pain. Three months prior to consult, she started taking turmeric and lemon serpentina in the hopes of getting better, but the mass still persisted. One month prior to consult, she palpated a lymph node in the right axilla and noticed that the mass was harder and that the skin was more wrinkled. Overall, she did not note any weight loss but noticed that she easily gets sick now compared to before. She underwent breast ultrasound and was advised to have a biopsy. However, she is hesitant and scared to find out what she has and delayed the procedure until the time of consult. Persistence and worsening of the mass caused her to seek consult. So if you noticed, and naalala ko talaga na this was how I conducted the interview. Ito yung way na nalaman ko lahat ng information. As in, kinwento ko lang talaga dun sa HPI kung ano yung nalaman ko. In na parang, jur parang journalist. Ano mo yun? Actually, feeling ko malayo din naman sa level ng journalist. But you get what I mean na kinwento mo lang as is. So, it's your job as the medical student and as the future doctor to convert the narrative into objective information. So, here is how to improve. But, take note na... Hindi rin siya ganun kaganda because like any other skill, this skill needs practice. And even though I'm giving you tips right now, marami pa rin akong kailangan i-improve. Remember that your objective in conducting and writing the HPI is to help narrow down your differential. So keep that in mind. When the patient gives their chief complaint, and of course after transitioning to physician-centered interview from patient-centered interview, you need to ask questions that will strengthen your impression. Most of the time kasi... May mga patients na magkwento sa'yo talaga ng marami. Minsan, may patients na hindi na naman masyadong makwento. So, it's your job to get that information from them. And then, you write it on your paper and do not, I repeat, do not tell it in a narrative form, just like what I did. So, try to present it objectively like this. 10 years prior to consult, patient noted a 1 centimeter mass on the right breast after hitting a table. No associated fever, nipple discharge, skin changes, or lymph adenopathies. Patient underwent ultrasound and mammography, which both revealed benign results. So, dito sa part ito, maganda kung ano exactly yung nakita since yung report mo naman would be read by your colleagues. So, magigets na yun. So, maganda na lagay mo na yun doon. Patient was lost to follow up until 4 years prior to consult. She noted increase in the size of the breast mass now measuring around 2 cm and is now associated with skin changes. 8 months prior to consult, she noted nipple inversion, and non-cyclic breast pain. No other associated symptoms at this time, no consult done. Patient took herbal medications but afforded no relief. One month prior to consult, noted palpable mass on the right axilla, still with right breast mass and skin changes. No noted weight loss. 
patient underwent breast ultrasound and was advised to have a biopsy, thus sought consult. So, di ba? Hindi siya perfect, but it's better than the first version. Makikita mo yung improvement na nagkwento ka lang based on what happened versus you getting the information out of the story and putting it in an objective paragraph. Alright, number two. Use your patient's identifying information. What do I mean by that? I thought before that the patient's identifying information is just for filing processes, you know, para lang alam mo kung ano yung identifying data niya, as it is called. But before, when I was in my last year of med school, one of my professors conducted an exercise where he only gave us the patient's age, sex, and chief complaint. And then from there, we were asked to formulate our differential diagnosis. Take note, wala pang history of present illness at that time. Patients age, sex, and chief complaint pa lang. So with this, you will be forced to think what are the common diseases associated with that symptom in that specific age group para hindi ka mag-iisip ng kung anong algorithm ba susundin mo, ganyan-ganyan. Parang ano yung most common on that age. However, the drawback here is that this implies na marami ka nang nabasa, marami ka nang alam na theoreticals about the common cases. This can only be applied if you have clinical exposure, and good foundation on your theoreticals. Which brings me to my next tip, which is don't spend a lot of time writing your papers. Again, don't spend a lot of time writing your papers. Number one, it's not efficient. Hindi lagi yung effort mo in writing it. Hindi mo yun makikita sa grades mo dun sa paper na yun. Especially when the grading system is not objective or standardized. You can spend all the time you have writing your paper and still end up with something na hindi ka masaya. When I was in second year med school, I used to do my papers as soon as matapos yung interview. Yeah, I was that kind of student, di ba? Parang gusto ko matapos na agad, tapos ang taga lang, nag end up, ang dami kong time na nasuspend on writing my papers. What I found effective is to write the patient's identifying information up to the salient features immediately after the interview para wala kang malimutan and then compare notes or compare your yeah compare your record with your friends ako i refrain from just ano eh, relying on the google docs kasi gusto ko meron akong own copy para din ma-practice na ako for when i do it on my own so yon iwan ko muna up to salient features and then i just like put it at the back of my mind just put it on my to-do list tapos babalikan ko lang siya pagka night before na nung submission or even nung mas naging comfortable na ako hours before. So, when you do this, you have more time to spend on your chances, on your lectures, which have more weight than your papers. Tapos, with that, you will also have more theoretical information to bank on when you write your paper. Di ba? Mas efficient. Next tip is to tailor fit your discussion or your case discussion to your patient. So in our report, we have uh, the clinical analysis or case discussion part. So in that part, don't stop at describing your impression, what it is, and in book definition, supported with the risk factors that are present in your patient that made you commit to that clinical impression. So ano ba risk factors na yun? So you get those information, those risk factors in your past medical history, family history, personal and social history, and review of systems. So, dun papasok yung other components na yun. Yun yung risk factors ng patient which will make you commit to that clinical impression. Ewan ko, kasi lately ko lang yun na-realize. Parang congrats if ginagawa mo na yun dati. Pero I think before ko yun nagawa talaga, I think I was in third year na or latter part of second year. So, at least now you know na dun mo siya gagamitin. Hindi lang siya hindi lang siya wala lang, hindi lang siya ililista mo lang, but use that. Parang bakit, bakit sa tingin mo ito yung sakit ng patient, di ba? Kasi in the past medical history, it says that blah, 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 blah. So yun, yun yung, yun yung lalagay mo sa case analysis or case discussion. Apart from the theoretical definition on the book, on the on up-to-date, ganyan. Alam na yun ng prof mo yun. So tell your prof, tell your preceptor, Doc, ito, ito yung meron sa patient, kasi ito nga yung sakit na to, pero sa tingin ko, kaya ito yung nangyari sa patient, kasi ito yung mga meron siya risk factors. Ganun. Para, ka, para ka na rin nag-pathophysiology na tailor fit dun sa patient mo. Also, dito mo rin nalagay yung mga criteria na inaaral mo sa transes like Duke's criteria, Framingham's criteria, Amsel's criteria. Lahat ng criteria dun mo ilagay dun sa case analysis. Kasi, di ba, hindi mo siya magagamit anywhere else but there. Next tip is to practice managing patients as they are. So, what do I mean by this? 
when I was in second year, third year, when, when we started seeing patients, I always used to ask our professor, our preceptor, na, Doc, should, I, should we discuss the patient as if kami yung unang nakakita sa kanya, as if wala pa siyang labs na napagawa, as if wala pa siyang gamot na iniinom, or should we report this or present this to you as if yun na, kung ano siya, kung ano merong labs niya, kung ano meron siyang gamot, yun yung tatry namin uh, gawa ng report. So, yun, lagi kayong tinatanong kasi parang at that time when I was younger, nahirapan akong gamitin yung information na meron na yung patient. And it really takes a lot of practice even now na ano na I graduated. I still need practice on that. But that's a good uh, way to start when you're writing your case reports. But then don't pressure yourself din naman kung hindi naman kayo require na manage them as they are. So how do you manage patients as they are? Especially if they have other long-standing diseases, you take a look at the disease control. I also had this preceptor who taught me that na pag meron silang sakit, huwag kang mag-stop sa pagtanong kung ano yung sakit nila, ilista mo din sa past medical history. But take note of the control of the disease. Is it well within the guidelines na controlled siya? What, do you, what labs do you use to assess if they're if their diseases are controlled, kailan mo ba mag step up or step down? So I actually found a tweet that said this just recently. I'll just put it up here. So ganyan, ganyan dapat. And I wish I knew this sooner. Because this is what we did when we were in fourth year or fifth year med school when you're a clerk and an intern. So it would really help na ma-practice mo na siya. But then, yung downside nito, if you're still in your second year or third year med school, hindi ka pa gano exposed sa ganon. And it would defeat the purpose of laying down your foundations first, your basic theoreticals first. So, it's just good to keep in mind na yun yung mga itatanong mo para ma-practice ka na. Because like I said, everything is just practice. You really have to just be comfortable in being a beginner, in being awkward at the start. Para the more you do it, the more you know how it's supposed to be done. And you'll end up doing it better than what you did before. And my last tip is to use clinical practice guidelines in your management. Don't stop at the books. Look at what is currently being used in, for example, in our setting in the Philippines. So there are clinical practice guidelines. You can just look it up on the internet. Just put, for example, clinical practice guidelines, tuberculosis. Tapos, it would also be better if you use the latest ones. Kasi, I just remember a story. Hindi siya story, kasi nangyari talaga siya. I just remember that one time when I was reporting on the clinical practice guidelines ng tuberculosis. Tapos, 2016 pa yung gamit ko. But apparently, mayroon pa lang 2020. So, during the report ko pa yun nalaman. Nasabi nung professor na meron na 2020. But it's a good thing na hindi naman ako napagalitan. And, you know, it's a good experience na when you make mistakes, hindi ka mapapagalitan. Ituturo sa'yo kung nasaan ba or tuturo sa'yo kung saan ka ba pwede mag-improve. And I really like that. And I really am grateful for that experience. So just make sure that the clinical practice guidelines that you use are up to date. Again, writing case reports is not something that you could be perfect at overnight. It really takes a lot of practice before it becomes second nature to us. Ako mismo, hindi rin ako magaling. Don't think na magaling ako gumawa ng case reports. It's just that, like I said at the start, these are just the techniques that I noticed that help me get a better grade. So just spend your time wisely, especially when you're in med school. Sobrang dami talagang nangyayari. Sobrang dami lectures, madaming cases. Parang sabay-sabay pa ng different subjects. So, Keep this in mind, especially yung wag mo siyang gawin ng matagal. Just give it like one hour or two hours. Two hours siguro or three hours pag nagsistart ka pa lang. Over time, you'll realize na hindi mo pala kailangan spend lahat ng time mo sa papers. Alright, that's it. I hope you find this video helpful. I wanna know. Let me know in the comments below kung okay ba yung lighting. Parang I'm experimenting on a lot of lighting and stuff. Like I said, dun sa isa kong video which is my tips on how I got over the most difficult exam in my life would be just to do it. Kasi nag experiment ako kung ano bang ilaw yung gagamitin ko. So might as well just shoot a video and then if it comes out not as good as I want to, at least nagawa ko na yung video. Diba? Just do it. So yun. Ang dami nga sinabi. <laughs> yun lang. Okay, bye. Thank you.